Good morning, good morning, New Hope. It isn't a blessing to be here in the house of the Lord again. It's also a blessing to be back here at New Hope. I know you know that we do have angels. He just made mention of angels. Angels all around us now. Our loved ones that has gone on. They are now our angels. They're protecting us from all dangers unseen. Do dangerous scenes and unseen, there's protection all around. In the
Thank you, Lord. And watching my babies away. Thank you, Lord. While my husband's on, on the road, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hey, hey, yeah. You, you and you, you and you and you, you know you got angels. Watching over me, protecting you, surrounding you, holding you, yeah. Thank you, Lord. 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 Everybody should be on his feet. If 
you had food this morning, if you woke up this morning, if you're not in a hospital with this COVID, he has already done enough, y'all. I'm talking about Jesus, y'all. Oh, I'm talking about Jesus. Oh, oh, I'm talking about your Savior, your Master, my Redeemer. Everything he is, I'm talking about Jesus. Because he's done so much for me. And I'm telling all oh, 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 my God, if it had not been for you, Jesus, you already know you've done enough for me to say hallelujah and say glory and say thank you, Lord. And I cannot say that. for being good. Thank you for being awesome, God. Thank you, thank you. Thank, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hey, oh, if the Lord for me to say thank you. You already done enough for me to give you glory. You already know for me. Praise your name. Yes. Come on, bless him, praise our God. Come on, you ought to give him a better praise than that. Does anybody besides me know he has done enough that if he don't do nothing else, he's already done much more than you and I could ever deserve. And that's why we give him worship. That's why we give him praise. That's why we give him thanksgiving. I wish I had about five more who know what the Lord has done. And when he has been good, and you know he's been good, then you know you should give him praise. Come on, help me celebrate the singing gift of Miss Tara Wilson Barker. Come on, put your hands together. For Miss Tara, she blessed us today. Miss Tara can come and sing for us anytime she get ready. Tremendous gift, tremendous voice. Thank you so, so very much. Glad to have our preachers, deacons, and our mothers sharing with us. And to you, our sisters and brothers, we greet you with the joy of Jesus. Amen. Amen to amen. If you're able to stand, please stand for the reading, reverence, and respect for the word of God. Zephaniah chapter 2, verses 1, 2, and 3. How many preachers you know are going to be preaching from Zephaniah this Sunday? Zephaniah chapter 2, verses 1, 2, and 3. Let's do these verses responsibly. Gather yourselves together, yea, gather together, O nations not desired.
Together, seek ye the Lord. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. I want to take text with the subject, how to get out of trouble. How to get out of trouble. Anybody ever been in trouble? Anybody ever been in a place where you needed to be rescued, delivered, and helped? It is inevitable for sinful men and women to get themselves in trouble. When God is holy and we are unholy, when God is righteous and we are unrighteous, when God is perfect and we are imperfect, we can find ourselves very easily in trouble. Who am I talking to already who find themselves in trouble? Somebody came in here this this morning and know you are in trouble. I, I ain't talking about with your spouse or your boo or your job. I'm talking about in trouble with God. To, to be in trouble with God. And I don't know how y'all feel about it, but that's the last person I want to be in trouble with is God. I need him for too much. I depend on him for so much. He is my source. He is my provider. I, I don't want to mess up the one who makes all things Happen. I, I don't want to be in trouble with God. Just like being in trouble with your parents, your occupation or job, or even in a relationship. There are certain methods and procedures to get back in good favor, in good grace again. You can't stay out all night long for those of us who marry and just come home like nothing ever happened. You you can't miss a, a day on your job and didn't call in. Or put, or make sure things are in place. There are certain methods and procedures that that one must encounter to get back in relationship and fellowship with God. That when you mess up in getting back, there is steps, procedures, and methods of getting back in relationship with God. Sephaniah is one who preaches to the people of God and to the society of a whole. And his name itself means one who hides, which is translate, he speaks of one who hides those who are the people of God during the time of his wrath. He speaks of God will hide us in the time of wrath and in the time of judgment. And we spoke about it at 8 o'clock, and you must hear me, ladies and gentlemen. Judgment will come. And God will land his judgment. You've got nothing out of the minor prophets as we have preached and teach. One thing you should come away with. That God is true 
in his judgment. We shout over the fact that he is a God of grace and mercy, but he's also a God of justice and righteousness. And we argued at the 8 o'clock worship that God would be unfair, God would be suspect, God would be in question if he was not a God of justice. That God demands justice. And justice will be served. Now we like that about God when it comes to somebody else. Or another group of people. But just as he will judge them, he will also judge us. And I know I wasn't going to get a lot of amen. And I'm glad I'm preached long enough where I don't preach for the amen. Because when you are called by God, you've got to say what God has called you to say. And it does not tickle the ears of people, but I hold, we as black Baptists, we have to move from just having good worship and having a shouting good time and our hearts not changing. It does nothing for us to come in here and praise God and don't leave transformed. Something should happen to our hearts and our spirits and our mind that makes us want to love right, live right, serve right, and be better. Am I talking to anybody in this place? You are here today because you want to be better and more than anything, you want to be in right relationship with God. Even though you find yourself in trouble. A couple of points here I'll share with us and I'll get out of our way. Verses 1, 2, and 3. That when we find ourselves in trouble. There are some methods and procedures that we can apply and use to help us get back in relationship with God. Look what he says here in verse 1 of Sephaniah chapter 2. Gather yourselves together. Ye gather together, O nations, who are to be ashamed of themselves. Before the decree brings forth, before the judgment, before the day pass as the chaff, before the fear and anger of the Lord comes upon you, and before the day of the Lord's anger come upon you. Here's what we can do before the day of trouble. Repent of our actions. He's calling for corporate repentance. Everybody. All y'all. Everybody. We have come before God with a heart of repentance. And if you had not done it since you've been in here, I'd give you a moment to tell the Lord you're sorry. Ask God to have mercy on you. I'm glad he gives his child time to turn around, to get it right. You see, repentance is much greater than regret. Regret is, I got caught. Really, I hate I got caught. The part I'm really messed up about is I got caught. The part that troubled me the most is how in the world did I get caught. That is regret. But then there's another level is remorse. Remorse is, I hate I got caught. I'm feeling sorry I got caught. I'm hurt that I got caught. 
But soon as the emotion and the feeling subside, we find ourselves right back in the same predicament. That's why you make those prayers. Lord, if you get me out, I ain't messing with nobody. Maybe I'm the only one that prayed those prayers. Lord, if you get me out this time, I won't ever do it again. And you do it again and you have to come back and say, Lord, I know I said it. That is the, 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 the prayer of repentance and remorse. Uh, but when you have true repentance, yeah. repentance, you want to make a 180. Yeah, come on. You want to turn, turn around from where you are. Yeah. You, you, you move from just regret and remorse yeah. till you want to be better yeah. and you want to do better. And you turn away from that that you desired and wanted and turn to something that's even greater. Yeah. I'm so glad God leaves the road wide enough yeah. that you and I yeah. can make some U-turn. Yeah. I don't want to get too happy too quick in my message, but how many in this place glad this morning that the Lord left the road wide enough? He waited on you and gave you some time so you could turn around and come back to him. Oh, I knew this crowd was going to be holy on me. I knew this crowd was going to act sedity on me. But I've got a few real people in this house know what it means to be in Foolsville and know what it means to mess up and do, to do wrong. But aren't you glad you got another chance? That's what repentance is. Is it's just getting another chance. That's why I act the way I act. That's why I preach the way I preach. That's why I do what I do because I know God has given me another chance. I shouldn't be standing here. It should be somebody else standing here before you. But God gave me another chance to lift my voice and to wave my hand. I don't know what you're going to do with your another chance. But I tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to make the best. Of another chance. Yeah. Ought to have about five more in here. Say, I came up in here to make the best of another chance. Anybody thankful that he gave you another, another chance? We can get out of trouble if we repent of our actions. Verse 1 and 2. He calls the nations together. Yeah. But then verse 3. Yeah. Verse 3 said we can get out of trouble. Yeah. Not only repenting of our action. Yeah. But seek the Lord's assistance. Well. Verse 3. Seek ye the Lord. Yeah. Seek the Lord's assistance. The Hebrew writer said that he is a reward yes, sir. Yes, sir. to them who diligently yeah. seek him. That yeah. I'm not chasing after men or women, well. cash, clothes, and commodities, yeah. and opportunity, well. but I'm chasing yeah. after God. I am pursuing God. Yeah. As the psalmist says, as the deer yeah. painted towards the water brook. Yeah. My focus yeah. is on God. I am seeking God. Yeah. How do we seek God? Well, we seek him through our lifestyle. Yeah. We live a life that is pleasing before him. We can seek him through prayer, having a strong prayer life. When problems show up, I seek God. When I need deliverance, I seek God. I don't run to medicate myself with drugs and alcohol, but I seek him. I have an appetite. A hunger and a thirst for God. Lord, help me to seek 
you. The gospel writer says that if we seek him, he will give us all these things. For he says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all those things you've been desiring and wanting. He said, I'm going to just put it in your lap. It might just be your problem. You're seeking after the wrong thing. Your focus is in the wrong place. Your pursuit is after vain things. But I've got about five or six of y'all who know when you put him first. Who know when you seek after him. He'll start dropping blessings in your lap. Deuteronomy said he'll have blessings chasing you down. He will put blessings on top of blessings. He'll give you a blessing for I'm about to preach my own self happy. He'll give you blessings that you ain't even expecting. You didn't even look for. You didn't even ask for. Does anybody know God can bless you like that? But we have to be a seeker of him. Seek his assistance. Look to him. Looking unto Jesus. Who's the author and finisher of our faith. I got to keep my eyes on him. I got to keep looking to him. Particularly when I find myself in a bad place. When I find myself in a place that's far from God. I've got to turn my attention back to God. And I need to seek him for his assistance. Let's face it, ladies and gentlemen, this life will put you in places. I don't care how much education, how many degrees you got. How smart you are and how spiritual you are. Life will put you in places where you need God's assistance. Big mama theology, I can't stand the storm if the Lord don't help me. I hear my big daddy say, Father, I stretch my hand to thee. No other help I know if thou would draw thyself from me. Whether shall I go? We need his assistance when we find ourselves in trouble. We need to repent of our actions, but then thirdly. I see y'all want me to go on and bid you good evening. Verse 3 gives us another action. Seek ye the Lord, all ye meet. Of the earth. We got to change our attitude. Change our attitude to the point where humility is the order of the day. You don't know nobody like this, but there's some folks who know everything. There's some folks you can't tell nothing. The scripture says pride comes before a fall. But they are so lifted up in pride. They are so cocky. They got their nose lifted so high that if it rains, they'll drown. Because they're so caught up in themselves. But humbleness is the way. And listen, ladies and gentlemen, God has a way of humbling us. I know I am right. Some of us know something about humbling situations. Somebody knows something about poverty. Poverty is a humbling experience. Oh, when you was riding high, you couldn't speak to nobody. But poverty will put you in a place where you'll speak to everybody. 
You even speak to folks that don't even speak to you. The Lord will humble us. Sickness will humble us. You're put in a predicament when doctors don't know what's wrong with you. Medicine can't cure you. All you can do is look to the Lord and look unto God. I tell you, it's a humbling experience. Not only sickness and poverty, just failures in life, failed relationships. Fail in parenting, fail in education, just failure in life will humble you. He says here, seek ye the Lord, all ye meet of the earth. God wants us to have a spirit of meekness. If you want help, Change your attitude. Learn to humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. Learn how to walk with humility. God honors the humble. And he resists the proud. Matter of fact, you can't worship God without a level of humility. Whenever you pray to God, you have to have a sense of humbleness. Because all you sing when you pray, Lord, I don't know, but you know. You're saying I'm weak, but thou I'm mighty. You're, you're saying I don't know the way, but you know the way. You're saying I can't get myself out, but I know that you can't. So when we find ourselves in trouble, yeah. repent of our actions. Yeah. Seek the Lord's assistance yeah. and change our attitude. Yeah. You know God will respond yeah. when we respond to him. Yeah. You remember 2 Chronicles 7 and 14. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves, seek my face, turn from, y'all know Bible, don't you? Their wicked ways. It is then and only then will I hear from heaven. Forgive them of their sins and heal their land. Y'all know our land need a healing. Our land needs deliverance. And our land is dependent on the righteous and those who know God who will call on his name and say, Lord, I'm sorry. And start seeking after him. And change our attitude. And watch God turn it around. I got some faith walkers in here. Who know God will turn it around. In the Old Testament, basically, he says to them, if you will, I will. I got some things I need you to do. And I'll step in and show myself to be a strong God, to be a mighty God. Let me leave you when I tell you the latter part of this verse. It says, and it may be, ye shall be hid in the day of the Lord's anger. Scripture declares who can stand against the wrath of the Lord. None can stand against God's wrath. But Zephaniah says, when you love it and you repent, 
and you start seeking him. And you change your attitude. He will hide you. Psalms 27 verse 5 says in the day of the trouble he will hide me. I was riding to church this morning and I began to have some flashbacks. I thought about some places I had been and some things I had done. And it was long before I had repented. I had started to seek him. And I had changed my attitude. But grace and mercy hid me, covered me. Now I ain't the only one in the house who knows something about God covering us and hiding us. You ain't always been as good as you are. You ain't always been at church on Sunday morning. But that God of ours with grace and mercy with judgment pending and looming he hid us from his wrath. I need about five of y'all who's shown up, shown up. Know that uh, you could have been dead. You ought to have been dead. You would have been dead. But it's nothing but God's grace. His blood covered me. Is there anybody besides me who know it was the blood? Just like in Egypt time, he told them to put the blood on the doorposts. And when God's wrath showed up, the wrath would pass them by. All because of the blood. Is there anybody in this place who can give God a strong praise? Because you know it was, it was the blood. It wasn't because you live so right and you were so holy God's blood that was shed on Calvary just for me I heard the songwriter say there is a fountain filled with blood draw in the manual's vein sinners plunge loose all guilt and stain the blood that Jesus shed for me it shall never never ever never lose his power that mean when I step out I'm covered when I'm coming in I'm covered when my family go out they are covered when my church move we are covered is there anybody in this place who know you got coverage I, I, I ain't talking about Guy Cole, all state, state farm, have been covered by his blood. I thank God that when the wrath falls 
and the terror come knows I'm here and he know I'm his child and he know that I'm covered in the blood there are people who say only a hundred and forty four thousand will make it in but they ain't read far enough for John said I, I saw a number no man could number they nudge one another and they said who are these who be these people these are they who washing their robe in the blood of the lamb they come out I said they come out of many tribulations where my folks at who've been rising and falling you've had ups and downs highs and low but you can give God a strong praise because his blood has covered you, shield you, protect you, carried you through mountains, through dangers, seen and unseen. Is there anybody besides me who want to give him a strong praise that he covered you? I, 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 I can't tell you how many times the enemy wanted to see me fall and fail. I can't tell you how many times my back had been against the wall. I, can't tell you how many times I've been in trouble but the devil underestimated the blood of Jesus because his blood shall never 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 lose its power it reaches to the highest mountain and it flows anybody know it flows it flows to the lowest valley yeah 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 won't it do it I said won't it do it thank God for his blood his blood is keeping us his blood is protecting us you all to go to your house in the spirit and just plead the blood of jesus the blood over my house the blood over my children the blood over my finances the blood over my health the blood over my church yeah 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 you ought to give him a strong praise can we thank him for his blood yeah his blood will cover won't it do it I said won't it do it Come on, give it the blessed praise you got. Give him the best praise you got. Y'all, we are kept by the power of his blood. 
Only reason you're here, not cause you wear a mask, wash your hands, and stay six feet away. There's some people did all of that, and they still. But this is not to say they're not saints. A saints can get it too. But even if I get it, I'm still covered. Still covered. And even if I check out of here, I'm still covered. God got me. God got me. I thank God for his blood. Old Testament, this is a picture of God's blood that hid them when the wrath fell. Only a remnant, only a small few made it. Well, guess what? I'm in that remnant, y'all. You are in that remnant if you're covered by his blood. Come on, stand all over the house. Come on, stand all over the house. We extend the invitation. We invite you to come here out of church. Need a church home. You need a covering of a pastor. You need the covering of a church. But most of all, you need the covering of the blood of Jesus. We invite you to come. Come get your covering today. You need a pastor that will pray over you. You need a pastor that will preach God's word to you.